I am Endlessness and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Our Crisis and in this video I wanted to give you a guide for the very hard Hanajar Hill Crisis Dungeon which has recommended around 235,000 combat power and this dungeon will be available for almost a month so we have a lot of time to, to clear it. So, all bosses in this dungeon are weak to lightning so lightning, DPS weapons and Ramu summon will be most useful here. But if you have good non-elemental DPS weapons, especially if they are magic, they will also be very viable too. And also while we have Cloud and now Zack as our best lightning DPS characters, half of those bosses are weak to magic and lightning magic attacks. Also the only sigil you'll need for this dungeon is the X sigil and if you are using any physical DPS characters, bring Asuna Fatigue. Also, worms, as usual, are very annoying and dangerous enemies because their attacks are very damaging as well as they will also lower physical attack and also inflict that fatigue size. And as for the other bosses, they are pretty much standard and rather easy to deal with. Then we have our dungeon map and this is our starting point, so the first boss we fight are those two Timoth units before we move to the middle section where we can choose between the Urbuster or two Sweepers. But what I'm going to recommend is go for the Urbuster because he'll already be glowing purple so that will mean he is a little bit tougher and then move further and fight the bloody worms as the third boss to ensure that they won't become too dangerous and leave those two sweepers for last before going to the last final boss of the dungeon and we also have three rare chests so the first two ones are here after the first boss and then next to the final boss and the third one the third item is hidden it'll be around here in this area just just after the sweepers. It will be very visible, it's like this glowing white pixel. I'll be using Cloud, Sephiroth and Matt and my team has 282,000 combat power and Cloud will be my lightning DPS, Sephiroth will be my DPS and debuffer and Matt will be my healer. Matt has Give Archer outfit and gigantic shield in limit slot, then centipede in main weapon slot for heals and that physical defense buff and then bramble spine in secondary slot to boost Cloud's physical attack. In sub equipment slots I have 4 point shuriken for some HP and buff debuff extension then guard stick to further boost Matt's heals. And also Matt has Exigo Materia, Lightning Breach and then Asuna Fatigue in that heal boost slot. So Matt has 10.5 HP, 2.7 heals and 128 physical defense. Then I have Cloud with Glavinous Armor but if you happen to have Marasame Garb it'll be even better for this dungeon. Then I have Ramu Summon in Limit slot and in May Weapon slot I have Marasame. In sub open slots I have Broadsword Axis and Mad Minute to boost Cloud's sliding potency and HP. And Cloud's only material is ex sigil so Cloud has 10.3 HP and 3.2 physical attack. Lastly I have Sephiroth with Lethal Style Outfit and Bahamut's Mega Flare in limit slots. Then in main weapon slot I have Kuja to apply debuffs and Protector's Blade for DPS. And if you happen to have CC Aloy Sword at higher overboost, I recommend that, but mine is still below B6, so it's hardly usable. In sub equipment slot, I have Power Soul to give Sephiroth a little bit more HP. And Sephiroth's only material is Ex Sigil, so Sephiroth has 11.6 HP and 3.4 magic attack. I have many equipment slots empty and that's because I wanted to lower my team's stats and power because with high winds and all those new nodes from level 80 we got a big power increase. But you should definitely equip where you have the strongest and will boost your stats the most. Also since this dungeon is all about thunder, lightning DPS weapons and stacking up lightning potency will be best for you. And Matt is again the best healer for this dungeon because all enemies will deal physical damage so Matt with centipede will be perfect here. And if you are using physical DPS characters, Bramble Spine will be also most useful here. Alternatively, Barret will also be, in my opinion, the second best support, especially if you are using any magic DPS characters because he can heal, provide physical defense and 
buff magic DPS characters. If you're using physical lightning DPS like Cloud or Zack, definitely bring a Suna Fatigue so they won't get hindered. And as for lightning DPS characters, we have Cloud and now with the newest crossover banner we also have Zack. Or there also is magic lightning you see if anyone invested into her. Otherwise we only have AoE magic lightning weapons on other characters, which can be viable but only if they are above OB6. Also, Yuffie uh, or Nanaki can also be useful too since they have weapons that can decrease lightning resistance. Of course, since we have that Leia's Cloud and Zack crossover banner, both Zack or Cloud are now top lightning DPS and their weapons will be amazing for this dungeon. If you're using Cloud with Glavinus, Cloud will keep buffing himself and will get a big physical attack buff without you needing to buff him with Matt or any other character, or even just to nullify the debuff he'll get. So, just when you begin, go here to collect those items and I, I'm already saying it, I will be using items here and I also recommend you to do this as well, like if you're using Sekiro or any other magic DPS user, that magic jelly will be very useful here, but for this first boss I don't think it's needed. Oh, I have to actually switch. So I just switched to Matt to provide Cloud that buff. I actually stay on Matt for the most part, I think, actually. Never mind. Just try to kill them as soon as you as fast as you can. I know Sephiroth will finish him off, so I don't really care too much. But here you still have time. That high voltage it can deal a little bit more damage than you think. So ideally you want to finish the right one first and the, then the left one when you see how much they are, how fast they are charging their attacks. And then trans abilities, you can choose whatever will fit you more. For example, if you have a full magic DPS team, this will be the best best trans ability for you but personally I will actually go for physical attack because clouds isn't the strongest here because most of the enemy of the bosses they will be weak to magic so I want to buff him a little bit if I can. Thunder cocktail and I will actually use it. Thunder on a cloud because he's my only lightning DPS and then magic jelly on Sephiroth. And really, don't be afraid of using items here. He'll be, here will be one of those random encounters, yes. And this one is annoying because yes, we have that bloody worm. So beware of that. I will wait till he attacks here and just recover HP. Ideally you want to go to the next boss with full HP or very close to that. So yeah, that should be fine. Also I was saving AEB on Sephiroth because Airbuster has two of those guard dogs so ideally I want to, you want to finish them off as soon as possible because they will lower your physical defense. But yes, as you can see it is purple. So yes, Airbuster, and I immediately go with Sephiroth to take care of those guard dogs. And I also want to provide that physical defense buff here, because a big bomber will definitely hit me. But that should be fine. So yes, as you can see, it's it still hits very hard. But 
but I think we should be fine here. Also, I will provide Cloud a buff here. And that should be it. Also, I am saving that lightning bolt for the worms. Because yes, you could use any of the items if you want to, but if you have a limit break ready and you don't use it on the current boss, you can just save it for the next one and that's what I'm actually going to do. And yeah, you could go wherever you want here. I don't think water resistance is needed at all, so I think this is always the safest one and on those crisis dungeons I personally mostly just go for the safest transfer ability. So yes, before I go to the worms I will use a little bit more items. So Thunder Cocktail on Cloud, Magic Jelly on Sephiroth and I think that should be fine. Yes, yes, you could use Cottage to replenish your... Actually, I will do it because the worms are annoying. So here, immediately start going... Start debuffing them. And try to... Also save that fast... Uh, Asuna fatigue here. And yes. Sephiroth will need to keep debuffing them and that's fine. I also do the that judgment bolt here. It will not kill the, the both worms and that's fine. We'll have to be hit eventually, but we should be fine here. Sephiroth, I was hoping he would be a little bit more smarter. But it's still fine. And this one can actually hit us. Ah, it wasn't so bad, but I have to recover here. Because if you noticed, if you don't have Glavness, Cloud will get a big physical attack debuff in this battle. So ideally, either if you pulled on a banner, use Glavness or you have to manually... Actually, I don't think uh, we'll need more heals here. So at least now Cloud has a buff. If you have one worm, you know he will not be doing a lot of damage to you, so you can compensate. And yes, if you want, you could switch to Cloud and actually most likely kill him without breaking those sigils or you could break the sigils. It depends because if you break sigils you get a little bit of score boost but also it'll take you longer to kill the boss so you'll, you'll lose points so you'll still be on the same score really. But also now I will have Mega Flare ready for those two sweepers. And it's up to you if you want to go with magic attack. I will actually go with this one because it's the most neutral one. But let me see. I have one magic jelly, so I don't really need it. I won't use any, any of the items here. So the first one is just Mega Flare and I will, I will use Gigantic Shield only because I will use the... Actually, it was fine. I didn't have to. But yes, Mega Flare, it just delete, deletes this boss. So that's why you don't need to worry about him. And the last Transabilia is... I would personally 
go for physical defense unless you have a weapon or any ability that will decrease magic defense. If you if you don't have that, go for physical defense because Zet and Rattel will do physical damage. So magic defense is not is irrelevant here. And I will actually use Mega Elixir because it will replenish all my limit breaks, everything. And I will also use Magic Jelly on Sephiroth and Thunder on Cloud. And personally, outside of dungeon ranking events, I will always repeat that don't be scared of using items. They will make this battle. Oh, I forgot there's a rare encounter. But it's very easy and fast to do, so they won't even really hit you. But outside of dungeon ranking events, don't worry and don't be afraid of of using items. They will just make the dungeon a lot faster and easier for you. While you also will not be actually losing points. You can score higher while using those items. Because you will not be struggling as much. And the battles will be faster, so, you, so you, in the end you'll still gain most likely a higher score, depending on your team and power level. So yeah, first... Actually, I could have used... Bramble Spine to buff Cloud. It would deal even more damage. It wouldn't be too much, but still. Now we only have half of the HP bar left to go. Mats, Bramble Spine, Stalwart bri Bravery, and twice for the Max buff. If you have it OB6, then all you need to do is just once. And just one more, and he should be over. And that's it, pretty much. Mega Flare is insanely powerful on this boss because he's weak to magic. So Mega Flare will do insane of damage, but it always does, really. Because it, it charges so slow, but it's also so powerful. So you in this dungeon, you benefit if you have any magic DPS, but we don't really have any strong magic lightning DPS. We might get it in next crossover banner with Tifa most likely, but so far we only have Cloud and Zack. But Sephiroth, in my opinion, with those non-elemental weapons, is very, very viable. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole dungeon. It's still S rank and a very high score. And... That's still with the items, because, as I previously mentioned, they will actually increase your score in, in normal Crisis Dungeons, from what I've noticed on me testing runs without items and with items. So, yeah, I hope you found this guide helpful, and thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next one.